I got a very beautiful letter from Kim Jong Un yesterday. It was delivered. What did it was hand delivered what from, and it was a very positive letter. What President Trump hinting he could meet again with the North Korean dictator in the near future for a third summit. That was just one day before Pyongyang fired off two more short-range ballistic missiles. State media there saying today Kim himself supervised the test firings of an unspecified new weapon system. Heightening speculation, he could be jockeying for leverage ahead of any face-to-face. -face. Anita Vogel is live in Los Angeles with the details. Anita. Well, hi, Arthel. This is the fifth round of missile launches in less than three weeks. And as you mentioned, they appear to be part of a new weapon system we haven't seen before. The two missiles were launched off North Korea's east coast on Saturday. Overnight, North Korea's official news agency released photographs of Kim Jong-un watching the projectiles from an observation post, appearing to supervise the test and calling it the launching of another new weapon system. Outside analyst examining the photo said the missiles were fired from a mobile launcher with two missile tubes that were unveiled for the very first time. They described these projectiles as new short-range ballistic missiles, and South Korea's military is reporting they flew nearly 250 miles before landing in the waters between the North Korean peninsula and Japan. The question now is how does this affect future negotiations between the U.S. and North Korea? Until this point, President Trump has downplayed these latest missile tests from North Korea, and experts say that has allowed the country more room to step up its testing activity and build some possible leverage ahead of future negotiations. Talks have stalled since the collapse of the second summit between the U.S. and North Korea in Vietnam back in February. Since then, President Trump and the North Korean leader shook hands at the DMZ this past June and agreed to resume denuclearization talks. Also Saturday, North Korea lashed out at South Korea for continuing to host military drills with the U.S. at the DMZ and for its recent purchase of U.S.-made fighter jets. Just prior to this latest missile test, President Trump shared more about his latest letter from Kim Jong-un in a tweet saying that he offered a small apology for the series of short-range missile tests and say saying that the testing would stop when joint military exercises ended. The president also maintained his hope for a nuclear-free North Korea, saying that that could lead them to be one of the most successful countries in the world. Now, we have yet to hear from the White House about this very latest missile test, and this is the ninth one this year. Arthel, back to you. Anita Vogel, thank you. Eric. And Arthel, for more on this, let's go to Captain Bob Wells. He's a retired U.S. Navy captain, former National Security Advisor to Vice President Dick Cheney. So, Captain Wells, I mean, man, oh, man, North Korea and Iran, you just can't stop them. I mean, they're at it again. Let's start with Kim Jong-un. We saw that he's proud. They fired five missiles over the past week or so, the newest one especially concerning. Officials say it uses solid fuel and was launched from a mobile launcher. As you know, that makes it much harder for us to hit. How concerned should we be about this new missile? We should be concerned in terms of the North Koreans' continued modernization of their capability. If you look long term and reflect back on uh, the Soviet Union and what happened after the Soviet Union uh, came down, also look at what happens when any regime comes down. It dep depends on uh, its defense industry. North Korea is also posturing for its uh, new economy. They'll probably use these particular missiles. They're heralding the modernization of this new solid fuel uh, surface to uh, surface missile as something modern that they could use possibly in their future economy. But it gets, I think it really gets back to what the future vision is on the denuclearization of the, Nor of the Korean Peninsula and the relationship in particular, not so much with the United States, which is key, as we focused on what President Trump continues to do with his letters coming from Kim Jong-un, but looking at the relationship between President Moon and, uh, and President uh, and Chairman Kim. Uh, I mean, what do you think will, will that'll mean? I mean, look, the president said he received a beautiful letter uh, in which uh, Kim Jong-un complained about the joint military exercises, uh, saying basically, uh, it seemed, that that's why he's been uh, firing off these missiles. Uh, of course, he wants those military exercises stopped. What do you think will happen? What should the president do? How do you think the president should react to the fact that he still is firing missiles, yet he sent him that letter, which could lead to a third summit? I think we're going to continue to do our exercises. We have a responsibility to defend the Korean, South Korean peninsula. 
Uh, we also are going to go forward looking at the diplomacy uh, and set up the framework that President Trump has envisioned with his previous two discussions with Kim Jong-un, both in Singapore and in Vietnam. I think our team has to be uh, very good communicators and try to try to really stay for the long game here, the deliberate long game. Uh, we cannot, uh, through diplomacy, uh, impact their particular intent to fire off these missiles. We're going to continue to work with our South Korean partner, the alliance. We're also going to keep the Japanese very closely informed. So where do we go from here, Eric? I think we actually go uh, where we're at, and that is uh, trying to work with the South Koreans to communicate uh, their intentions with regard to the future of the Korean Peninsula and also the United States looking at that line of communication between the president and the chairman Kim Jong-un and making sure that our mill-to-mill -mill, uh, continues to work. I think a final point is yeah. that we have a really capable ambassador also, U.S. ambassador in Seoul with uh, Admiral Harry Harris or Ambassador Harry Harris. Uh, he knows the uh, responsibilities for both the political and the military uh, requirements for the uh, defense of the Korean Peninsula. So uh, we're not going anywhere on the American side. I think it really uh, goes to uh, the intent of, uh, of, of Kim Jong-un to basically fulfill his promises and work within his regime uh, to create a better discussion with South Korea. And finally, quickly, I mean, is, is there any possibility that you see that, that Kim could move his economy, as you just pointed out, you know, from the military-based economy to something that the president envisions and has proposed. Do you think that is realistic at all? I mean, what does he do with the with this old infrastructure that is militarized? Well, I think it's a it's a matter of strategic communication. Uh, if you recall, effective strategic communicators that can actually show what could be from the as is uh, of the North Korean economy, that's where. Mr. Trump's communication skills, that is where, looking at the tremendous progress that the South Korean economy has achieved over the last 40 years, and the, and the capability of the Korean people and the fundamentals of economics, the land, the labor, the capital of North Korea, and putting it in that particular context, and not forgetting the Chinese. They have a role to play, obviously, there as well with their economy. Uh, there could be a, a grand bargain, I think, with regard to the Korean Peninsula economy, and that gets into the leverage and the linkage to the denuclearization. And what we have now is, is sincerely a failure to communicate and communicate effectively, and that takes both parties. And you have to listen and you have to understand. I think that goes back where we are with uh, President Moon and some of the mischief with these new uh, missile shot. So it, it's very complex, but at least we have a progress, uh, a process. We are communicating at multiple levels, and it's just going to take a deliberate uh, time to actually move through and to try to get uh, Kim Jong un to cease uh, these particular firings and upsetting. Uh, the actual world community as he has done. Yeah, and meanwhile, on the other side of the world, Iran, I mean, it's like, you know, the bandits and stagecoach, or it's like they're, 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 they're fishing, or these, <laughs> the, you know, I mean, you get these robocalls, you know, they keep on poking, poking, poking. This time, they put, supposedly are using GPS to try to redirect tankers so they can capture them. Uh, I mean, we're trying to build this maritime force against Tehran. We have Britain on board, talking about 30 nations or so. Uh, what are the chances, do you think, that this maritime, maritime coalition can be up and running to protect these tankers? Uh, great question. I think the chances are very good. I have to recall the uh, success that the international maritime community had uh, with the combined maritime force at Fifth Fleet in Bahrain, uh, co-chaired by the United States and the U.K., against the piracy in Somalia. We have the organizational framework to actually have good command and control, good logistics, good intelligence, uh, INW, to look at protecting and actually having stability in the Gulf uh, with that organization. Uh, it's still going to take time, I think, with regard to the maritime forces, uh, UK ships, uh, also the international uh, commercial community, uh, knowing who's on board their particular vessels and looking at the business that still needs to be done in the ports in the Persian Gulf. So uh, there is a framework that's there. It's, in, it's at Fifth Fleet, and it was successful in the piracy operations. It has to be enlarged, obviously, because of the, the Persian Gulf and the North Arabian Sea approaches uh, to the Strait of Hormuz. And it was successful back in the 80s during the so-called tanker wars. Uh, so those ships certainly need...
protection, and Tehran knows certainly where the president stands on this.